some things are not very easy to do with the built-in Google Sheets functionality. For example, the age function, just based on a date of birth, how old are they? So you can actually name your function now. So this just takes a start date, usually a date of birth, and press Control Enter to fill that in, and there you go, 14, 5. These are in the future, that's why it's giving me an error. Um, and this one, I can just say QR generator, and look at this code, and this will actually give me a QR of that website. So if this is something that you would find useful, then I'm going to show you how to make these custom functions in the video. It's in the data tab. It's called name functions, brand new feature. I'm going to walk you through some of these. Or if you just want to get the functions on your own, then leave me a comment underneath this video and I can send you this file. My name is David and I have tons of videos on my channel about Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Power BI, Zoom, Teams. If you're using Tech of the Workplace, I'm covering on my channel. So check out my weekly videos on this kind of stuff. And I love talking about the new stuff. If you do enjoy what you learned in this video, then leave me a like button down below. So here I'm in a new sheet and in the data tab, you have named functions. So this is the brand new thing. And these are all the ones I have. So here I want to get a sum of these numbers, but excluding the error. So if I write a normal equals sum, that will give me an error here. What I want to do is have something that can ignore the errors. So what I can do is I can write equals if error. And if error does something very, very simple, which is absolutely nothing if there's no error. But if there is an error, it can replace it with a value of your choice. In this case, and in most cases, we'll do a zero. So if error of this cell, comma, zero, will replace it with an error. But if this one stops being an error, then it will just be that cell value. So what I'm going to do is inside my sum function, I'm going to write before my sum, if error, open my brackets for the if error. And before I close it, comma, value if error is going to be zero. And I need to close my brackets twice, once for if error and once for the sum function. Press enter, and I get the number 11. So this one is the function that I want, but I'm going to make that into my own function. So there's a couple of ways to do that. You can right click and you can choose view more cell actions and define name function. I do like how Google Sheets has built this in so you can get to it from a number of different places. So here is my name function and note they already added it underneath here, which is really, really useful. So I'm going to name this sum with errors. So it's always uppercase as all function names are and there's no spaces. If you want a space, you need to do this underscore. What is the description? And then argument placeholders. So I'm just going to write range, press enter. This is always lowercase and you can't have spaces again. You can have as many as you want. And then over here, formula definition, it says, well, we've got a suggestion, which is this one. So I can click on that and I can choose that's range. All the ones that you've predefined are being here like that. And then press next. And this is optional. So I'm just going to leave this blank. And now if I do equal sum with errors, note that it does say name function there. I can double click it or press tab to lock that in. And then I can do it with these values and that will be 11. But if this changes to equals nine divided by zero, then it's just these three, which equals six, which is great. So that is how you can do it. You can just build in these functions that you want to do. To look at where the stuff that I typed in happened, if I click inside the function, you have this thing to expand and collapse. I get an example about some definition and range. Notice that there is nothing underneath here. However, if I edit it, so if I go here and I choose edit, then I choose next, I can do this argument description and example. So I could say here, update. And now if I edit in there, I can see it adds it over here. And here's the example that's put in there. So that can be pretty useful. Um, one thing to note though, is that it does not work with optional arguments. So uh, Excel's version does work with optional arguments. When you have a sum function, a sum can have a value one comma value two, et cetera. And the later values have square brackets, which means they're optional. Most of the time with sum, you just use the first one, but you can press a comma and refer to another range and keep going with uh, a third and fourth range, et cetera. Unfortunately, these custom functions, the named functions, don't work with an optional argument for the moment. So you find a workaround, it's not great, but this one, two range, sum with error. So if I edit it, it says sort of, one of them is called first range, the next one is called second range or zero. And this says essentially counts the number if it's one, <laughs> it's, if it's a zero or a single value, then it will just give you the first one. Otherwise it will add together the two ranges. It's not perfect. Um, I could come up with a more robust one, but this is a slightly simpler formula. And then I could say equals two range sum with errors. So in the first example, I'm just going to do one range, which is these three. I'm going to say comma zero, and then it only adds four. But if I have two ranges, then I can say this range comma, and then this range like that. And then it would add and get six. So it's not great, but it does, can work <laughs> as a workaround. Note that this is optional as well. Let's do another very, very simple one. So let's have one called the tomorrow function. So you can also get to it by a new function and I can call this tomorrow. And there's actually, this is optional. So there's not gonna be any arguments in this. So formula definition is going to be equals today plus one. Next and create equals 
tomorrow, which is this. This is using month, day, year. So today is currently the 6th of October, and tomorrow is going to be that. So it's very rare that you would not have any arguments, but it is an optional field for this kind of obscure scenario. Another one I built it for is equals the exchange rate of USD to GBP, just so I have it at any time, and I can just grab it whenever I want to. So this next one is an if with contains. So I want to check whether it contains J and U like that. It doesn't have to be at the start of the word as well. This could say next July, and that would still have it like that because it does contain it. And this is impossible to do in an if formula. So I've written one called equals if contains, and I'm going to show you how to build this. So we need to break down the formulas first. So there is a function called search, which allows you to search for text. So let's click on there, press F4 to lock it in. And then where is the text to search? I can click here, close my brackets, and I get six. But if it doesn't find it, it will give me an error. So here, it is the sixth character, one, two, three, four, five, six, and otherwise it will give me an error. So actually, we don't care about this number, we just want to know is it an error or is it not. So you can also have equals is error, that one, and then I can now say search for this F4 in this text, and then close my brackets, and that will kind of return what we want. We've now got the ones to distinguish between them. And then we just need to wrap it inside an if formula. So here I can say equals if, open brackets, and then I'm going to say comma, value of true. Now it's kind of reversed. So value of true is actually going to be the value of false. So here I will say false, otherwise true. It's really counterintuitive because, you know, does this contain July? True, it does. And if I drag it down, I need to kind of flip them because these don't contain July <laughs> because you're doing an is error, which returns true if it is an error, that kind of thing. So once I've got this, now I'm going to go to view more cell actions and I'm going to say define named function. This is kind of the easy way to get there. So that way it puts it in here and gives you these argument suggestions. So I'm going to say if contains, I've already got one without underscore. So uh, I'm just going to write this in. And then here I've got actually quite a few placeholders. So I'm going to be typing in text to check. And then so I need these four the argument suggestions. Together. So K3, this is going to be the text to check, define. And then this is going to be the cell to check, define. And then false and true. So note that they are reversed. So this is going to be, I can select it and I can write value if false. And then I'm just going to copy that and paste it and then re change here to true, just to speed up. Now we've got our four different arguments and then press next. And now I have here, I can give it details. So for each argument, I can give it a description and an example. So this is optional. Um, I'm just going to fill it out and then you can see what it would give. So I've entered it there and then I'm going to just press. And now I can go equals if contains text to check, cell to check. And then if true, I'm going to say hot. If false, I'm going to say cool. Uh, make this F4. Note that I could have just typed it in with speech marks and it would still work. And note as well that this is so easy to do with conditional formatting, because with conditional formatting, you can just select your data, go to format, conditional formatting, and just say, add a rule. And if it says text contains JU, then I've already got one that is showing me that, but you can add it like that. Let me drag this above and then it'll be green. So it's so much easier to do with a built-in method with conditional formatting, but it's not built in for this sort of thing. So write your own custom function. Now, as I said before, if you just want a list of all of my custom functions, then let me know and I'll leave them to you. I will go through a demo of all of mine that I have as of this moment in time later on in this video. All right, so um, another one that I'll show you, and this is based on the demo that I gave earlier, is the QR code, because what's interesting about this is that it does give you a way to get it as well. So let's go to data and then define named functions, and let's go to my QR generator. I'm going to go to edit, and I'm just going to copy this and paste it into a cell. Notice that now I have to change the arguments back. So instead of image link, I'm going to click on the cell there. So this, I'm going to backspace that and click on the cell with the website. And I'm going to do the same down here. Click on the cell with the website like that. So kind of switch it back. And now it is giving me this QR code. This is using the charts.googleapis.com, which can convert into QR codes quite nicely. Something that you can't do in the regular Excel, but what you will notice is that when you have a complex function like this, Google Sheets will actually give you this option to add a new function, and there is a shortcut for it. But this shortcut only works if you get this pop-up. If you do it on another one, like for example, um, any function like equals sum of this numbers, then it will not give me that option of add as function, but it will do it, I think, it, based on complexity. So 
guide new function will just be the same as the right-click method, but it's a much, much faster way of getting there. I wish there was a more built-in way that happened more consistently, but I've only found it in this method. Next, I'm going to show you the ones that I've created. And again, if you want to have those, then just leave me a comment in this video and I can share the file with you. So um, the main examples here. So here I have yeah, the weekday name. So convert this to the name of the weekday that that happened on. The month name. We already looked at age. As you can see, there's two errors. So we actually have functions called counts errors, which is able to tell me there are two errors there. But if I change another one to nine divided by zero, that's now going to be three errors. Then a text join if function. So who were the people who were born on a Monday? So that would be filtering this for Monday, these three, and then listing out Jim, Juliet, and Janine. This is something that you can't do in the regular Excel. Google Translate, but I'm from Cambodia, where we speak in Khmer. So instead of having to memorize the language codes, I can just write equals Khmer English translation. We can set this up to whatever you want, and then it will convert that into English. QR code generator, I already showed that one. And unpivot. So unpivot will go from data that looks like this, is set out in rows and columns with the main data over here to something that is just in three columns, one for the row values, one for the column values, and then one for the actual values. I have a whole video about unpivoting in Google Sheets in much more elaborate ways than this, but it's really nice to be able to say equals unpivot. And then I have my rows, comma, my columns, and I can even leave blanks at the end. It does cater towards blanks as long as they're the same size, obviously like that. And then it ignores the blanks as long as they're there. But if I, for example, get Romania with 700 in the month of August, that will get added here at the bottom, Romania in August as well. So if these blanks are filled in, then this will continue to work, which is kind of nice, the unpivot formula. So let's say that you have a new spreadsheet. So I'm going to go to file and new spreadsheet. And from here, I just want to import the other one. So data and then name functions again. And I can import functions that I recently edited, this one. And I can just take them one by one or import all. Uh, note that it says that it interacts with an Excel data source for one of them, that being the QR code generator, because it is looking at this Excel website. So I'm going to press import anyway, and then I have them imported like this. You do have to do it annoyingly for every file. There's no way that I can tell to have it by default in every new Google Sheets file, which is something that you can, to an extent, do with Excel. If you just want to have all of these functions. But the, the benefit of this is that anyone can edit the Google Sheets file, the existing one, and still use them uh, versus someone else's version of Excel not being able to handle these custom functions. So let's go back to my last file here. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to go to File and then Download as an Excel file. And then I'm going to click on it. Sometimes it's going to say yes, if you want to import it. Um, sometimes you're going to get this which means that it doesn't work. <laughs> and that is because I have some kind of obscure ones like the QR generator, et cetera, et cetera, that I don't want to get. So let me um, make a copy of this file. So I'm going to say this is reduced. So over here it's reduced ones, and I'm going to go to name functions, and I'm going to remove some of them. So Excel doesn't have the ability to do some of these things. For example, Google Translate is only Google, so I'm going to remove that. Notice that that's going to give me an error here because the function doesn't exist anymore. Same with QR code generators. And I'm just going to delete some other ones that also do not work because of the compatibility issues. Um, it's not common, but just the ones that I've built in here, a lot of them don't work. So I'm going to now here go to File and then Download as Excel file. And I'm going to open it. And now it has worked. So it has given me all these errors, which means it hasn't worked directly. But if I go to the Formulas tab in the Name Manager, note that in Excel you only have a Name Manager. In Google Sheets you have a name manager for named formulas and named ranges. So here it's done this one. Um, it has actually put it in. It's converted it to a Lambda, which is how Excel deals with these. And if I go to edit and I press OK and close, now it has actually worked. <laughs> so what's happening is that the if contains, it is showing me like this, but this is trying to refer to a named range. Um, if I go to the name manager for each one and I click to edit it and then OK, you're essentially not really changing anything. Then you can write if contains, and now it's showing me like this as an FX, value to search, etc. So with a little bit of an adjustment, it does work for compatibility. So let's try the other way, going from Excel into Google Sheets. So Excel's version will only work if you have Microsoft 365. If you have an older version of Excel, like 2021 or older than that, then unfortunately it won't work. So let's go into Google Sheets. You can go to File and then Import, and then we're going to Upload. And in Excel, I'm going to press F12. I'm going to end up just dragging this one into there the easiest way to do it. And I'm going to create a new spreadsheet. So here is how it worked. As you can see, month name is in there. And if I go to my data tab and I choose my name functions, then they are showing me here. Uh, a little bit different. They, If I edit it, it doesn't have any description. 
it just has the bare minimum, which is this one. And it puts, for some reason, this in front of it, uh, pretty much in all of them. And actually, if you write it for yourself, so if I write equals month name, which is one of the ones that I created, then I get here, underscore xlpm dot date. So it, it will still work, but it's just going to ask me for that. And all of these will do the same thing as well, xlpm. By the way, um, here's your add new function as well, which comes from this more advanced formula. It has also put these other things in front, array constraint and array formula, which I actually didn't need for this one, but sometimes Google tries to play it safe when it does conversions from Excel, and that's why it thinks it needs to do that, uh, even though it probably didn't for this case. So yeah, here again, it's done a lot of array constraints and array formulas. That won't harm the formula. The formula will still be functional. It'll just be safer in case Google thought it was going to break it, but it's uh, not needed in this case. So as well as these different functions, um, Google Sheets did launch another set of functions. So it launched Lambda, and Lambda is the way in Excel to write your own custom functions, and some Lambda helper functions, which can return arrays or other things which are helpful with that. That is a bit more advanced than I'm going to cover in this video, but all of these were released. And then we have XLOOKUP and XMATCH. And XLOOKUP is really, really game-changing for anyone that's a VLOOKUP or an index match user. XLOOKUP is easier to write than a VLOOKUP, but it's being way more powerful than index match. It's kind of like the best of two worlds, which is really, really awesome. And XMATCH is an updated version of MATCH, which uses similar values to XLOOKUP. Let's look at XLOOKUP very quickly because it is pretty useful. So let's say, for example, that I want to know what was the date of birth of each of the people. So I would say, for example, here, Juliet and Jim. Now, with a VLOOKUP, you wouldn't be able to do that because you can't look from right to left. You can only look from left to right. But with an XLOOKUP, you just write the search key, which is this one, comma, and then what the lookup range is, i.e. what the, usually the column, although it could be a row as well, replacing an HLOOKUP, and then what the return result is, this one, press F4 to lock that in, and that's it. Those are the minimums that you need, and here it will give me auto fill suggestions, perfect. And if there is a name that's not on there, for example, Harry, then if I drag it down, it will give me an error, as we know from other ones. But if we do the fourth input to be a missing value, so an if not found, then I can say um, the speech marks, speech marks, so a blank cell. Then if I drag it down, it will just return a blank cell instead of an error, which is really good, an error handling part to it. There are other inputs to it to make it more advanced, but it's really, really great. It solves a lot of the problems that a VLOOKUP typically has that people typically use index match to do, but index match is horrible to write. <laughs> in fact, if we'd have gotten custom functions before XLOOKUP was released, I am pretty sure that a lot of people would have written a function which gave an output of an XLOOKUP, but made it as easy to write as an XLOOKUP using index match and if error functions. <laughs> so it was really, really great. So I hope you enjoyed that video. It's a whistle stop tour on this, but it's a lot of new functionality. If you did, then consider giving me a like button. My name is David Benheim, and I have tons of videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Teams, Zoom, Power BI. So if you use tech at the workplace and you want to learn more, especially the new stuff, then check out my other videos. Thanks for watching.